right. Hello, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to talk about my little baby, my small business, the Rainbow Unicorn Manila, and everything that goes with it. My name is Michaela Sika Tardonez, just like what Nikki said, and you can call me Mika for short. All right. So first of all, I'm going to show you who are the masterminds behind our small business, and that's my family. So that's me. I'm in the middle. Joyce is my wife. Um, she's the one wearing blue. Gavin, our son, who's 11 years old, and that's our doggy princess, Tala. And we are currently living in Burlington, New Jersey. And yes, it's 2 o'clock in the morning here, and it's okay. Anything for Obra. And I'm really happy that I'm here right now. Um, so we're managing from here. But of course, our, bis our business is in the Philippines. So aside from the Rainbow Unicorn, um, we have day jobs too. Joyce is an occupational therapist. And I am a preschool teacher. All right, so let's talk about my business a little bit more. I'll introduce it to you to, so that you'll get to know us better. Um, one, we make toys that are interactive and educational to help kids develop their skills. So that's language development, fine motor, um, problem solving skills, sensory integration. So all of our products touch these skills. Um, we also come up with unique toys that are not normally seen in any toy store. And we also aim to inspire families to be gadget free. So that's actually our tagline, be gadget free. Because nowadays, you know, that kids are totally addicted to the gadgets, the video games, the YouTube videos. So our products are packed with activities that are very interactive and that the kids will never get bored. So they're way better than holding an iPad or a cell phone. So that's our um, reason where we're moving. So to show you um, and to prove to you that we are way better than gadgets, I'm going to show you some of our products. So we have busy bags. We have five um, subjects. We have art, math, values, ed science, and ba basic concepts. Um, they ha we, have six, um, we have six activities per bag, which is very interactive. We also have educational play mats. We also have sensory bins, my personal favorite. I'm 33 years old and I still play with them. Um, we have different themes as well. My kids, um, my students actually really love them too. And we also have um, alphabet puppets, story puppets um, to make storytelling more fun for kids. And the number one product that we have it, um, are our busy books. So um, we have different themes of busy books. We have a dollhouse, we have dinosaur, we have fairy tales. And um, we also have our bestseller, which is our regular busy book. It is um, a 12 page book with um, different activities that touches basic concepts like letters, numbers, colors, shapes, and fine motor practice. So it's a bunch of things in one book. Um, we have a lot of mommy clients who love our product so much and they're actually thanking us because the kids are learning from it. And this is actually our first product ever. This is the very first product that we launched. It's called the Artwork Plushies. So um, your child can actually draw or paint or actually make a Lego masterpiece or a Play-Doh creation and we can actually make an artwork out, uh, I mean, a plushie out of it. It's a timeless piece. It brings back memories. So it's a very great um, product. And last but not the least, the fidget blocks. I'm very proud to say that we are the very first one in the Philippines who um, made fidget blocks. So they're actually um, little blocks. We have small ones and actually big ones that you can tinker with. They're great with um, fine motor skills and problem solving frustration tolerance and I even have a friend who carries it all the time so instead of like fiddling with your cell phone you can actually play with it it's functional and it lessens anxiety so yeah so these are all of our products and I want to share with you the reason why we started the business um, so we started in 2015 we started to try and make artwork plushies for our son Gavin who was into art and creative play and then eventually, we had to think of something to incorporate a lot of learning skills from his play and thought about developing these toys. So just a fun fact, my son is actually in the spectrum. He has autism. So um, being an occupational therapist and a preschool teacher team, we were challenged to really think of 
um, a toy, a functional one, and a unique one that would help him with um, skills that he needs honing, like fine motor and pretend play. So after the artwork plushies, we started on Busy Books, and it was a hit. Um, a lot of people really liked it and asked us if we can make um, some for them. And before we know it, we made an Instagram page and advertised it. Um, we kept on going, and the love for what we do kept on growing. All right, um, I'm going to switch the mood a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about something sad, but you know what? I want to share this to you because it's a very... Um, big lesson for my business. So I just want to share to you the major challenges that we faced during this pandemic. So one, of course, sales went down. Um, I guess most businesses right now are facing that. Um, I guess families have different priorities right now. Of course, they're not going to put number one. Um, they're not, they're not going to put shopping as number one priority right now. No, So of course, sales went down. And because of that, cash flow shortage na nangyari. Um, so, um, yung pasok ng money sa business namin, of course, it's not as strong as before. And because of that, of course, decrease in revenue as well. So the profits it really lowered um, probably two to three times, two or three times lower. Um, so because of that, it became a domino effect. So what did we have to do? We had to lay off some staff. Sadly, it's very heartbreaking for us. Pero sobra nahahagulat talaga ang pandemic. Like you never thought that it's possible to happen. So we had to do it. Um, we gave a month's notice to some of our um, staff. We have a 10-member staff. Now we have five. And two of those are actually new. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a drastic change. But I guess you really have to do some changes when surprises come. And of course, in our social media, there was a decrease in followers. So again, it might be because families have different priorities right now. So there are tendencies that they would unfollow your social media. And of course, there's an inconsistency in the shipping schedules. So because of the ECQ, GCQ, MCQ, and all of those queues in the Philippines, um, we have to move shipping schedules. And it was very erratic. Of course, um, we would have to inform our clients that, um, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm sorry, sir, that um, we did promise that after two weeks, you're going to get your order. But unfortunately, we have to move it a month. So some are very understanding. We're very lucky, siempre, because it's a pandemic. But of course, some, that they would say, na, we, are, we already paid for it, you know. So it's a major um, challenge that we faced. All right, so I'm proud to say that even with these challenges, we accepted them and we found solutions to the problems. So first solution was to advertise, advertise, advertise. Um, before the pandemic, we were already active when it comes to advertising. Um, but this time around, we are even more active. Like in our social media, we would post every day of our products, we would think of strategies on how to make our ads more attractive to, to potential clients. Um, what is more interesting now? What's a upcoming holiday? Or uh, what's a good promo? You know, We would post all of these so that um, it's attractive to potential clients. Of course, we use new photos and videos of products. Of course, they get tired of what they see all the time, your followers. Um, so we tend to change it every now and then. And we used COVID as a marketing point. So what do I mean by that? So ngayon na there's pandemic na nga, no? We try to make it light and encouraging to, to, to our clients. So we say, like, for example, our caption on our, on our ad would be like, don't, um, don't make staying at home boring with your children. Um, uh, choose our developmental toys to make a fun and learning experience at home or something like that. So, yeah. And then next we have promos, promos, promos. So within the pandemic, I think we already had like three to four promos because who doesn't like a good sale? Um, so we did like a buy one, get one 50% off or buy two and get the third one for 10% off. So you really have to be creative when you're doing promos because it's really attention getting. And also, we asked help from our loved ones who believed in us. So um, I think the perfect 
advertisement as well as to is word of mouth. So, syempre, um, family namin, friends namin, they they really um, helped us advertise our business. Some of them even um, partnered us with celebrities so that they can promote it. So, you would be surprised that a lot of your family and friends would definitely um, be eager to help you during these times. And let everyone know that your business did not fall down just because of this pandemic. All right, so I just want to share to you some major lessons that I learned. One, always keep up with the times. So what do I mean by that? Um, you have to think of what is currently happening. Like um, people can go outside, so they're staying at home. So think of a product that can address those needs right now. Maybe if you're selling food, uh, let your client know that you're flexible with time. You have different delivery options. You can accommodate a big party, you know, things like that. So you have to adjust with what's currently happening. Also get to know your potential clients by doing your research, like make a poll or uh, talk to family and friends as well. Do your research. Next, prepare a backup fund for emergency situations. So this really hit us hard. Um, so to make ends meet within the business, we really had to take some money out of our salaries, which was really heavy for us. But if you really want your business to stand, you have to make drastic changes. So this was a lesson learned. Um, so starting when the pandemic started, we started like saving a little bit of our money coming from the business and actually from our salaries as well, just to have that backup fund so that we wouldn't be surprised when an emergency situation comes in the future. Also, use the internet to your advantage. Excuse me. Find an audience. So what do I mean by that? Um, I actually learned this from Sam, who's part of the Obra team. Hello, Sam. Um, uh, in my case, I joined Facebook groups like mommy groups, um, baby items groups, homeschooling, teaching, crafts. I, I, I joined every, every group that I could think of that's connected to my business. And I was surprised that there was a, a lot of members who was actually interested. They were interested to see what they have to show. So you would be surprised how much internet has something for you. You just have to find that opportunity. Um, so be original. So right now, if you want to start a business, you have to think that there's a lot of competitors. So in our case, we're, at, uh, we're, we're um, a toy store. So how are we different? So we say that one, we promote gadget free play. Um, two, uh, we say that we are a, a occupational therapist and a teacher team. And three, that our team is um, uh, made up of mommies. So if you buy a product from us, you would be able to help mommies from Olongapo or from Quezon province. So yeah, so that's what we are showing our, our potential clients that we have the heart in, in, in within that, the toy business. Or konyare, like right now, and dami bilang nagbebenta na sushi bake, no? <laughs> so how can you be different from any other sushi bake companies, no? Maybe instead of kani, you can use ahi tuna. Or maybe if you if you um, if somebody buys, you can include like a dessert or mochi dessert. You know something like that. You think of strategies to show people how you are unique from everybody else. And if you make a mistake, stand up, find a solution. Do not be afraid to make a mistake because mistakes will always happen within a business, and you have to be brave every time there's a mistake. You stand up, you find a solution. Sometimes the solution cannot be immediate, um, but it's there. You just have to be patient and understanding about it. And most importantly, never give up on something you believe in. Believe me, believe it or not, I almost sold my business because it's just it's not the sales really went down. So me and my wife, we were we were thinking about it and we were talking about it this is our business and we believe in it. Um, we, we poured our heart and soul on it. So we didn't want to give up. So right now we're standing up and we're actually getting better. All right. So thank you. I hope you learned a thing or two from my small talk. 
Um, if you want to follow us, we have Instagram. We have Facebook. If you want to contact us, um, our email is there. And we also have Viber. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.